Hello, good afternoon, good afternoon everyone, good afternoon, welcome, welcome, welcome. Good afternoon, hello, welcome, hello, hey Michelle, hi just a servant, hello coveralls and lipstick, welcome, welcome. Welcome to Esther's Preparation Room. Hello, Kemi. Welcome. Hello, hello. How are you doing today? My name is Dolapo Olufumilaya. Welcome. Well, welcome, just a servant. How are you doing today? I hope your, do your day is going great. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you, thank you. I hope you're staying safe wherever you are. I'm doing great. Thank you. I'm doing great. Hello, Lamy. How are you doing? All right. I'm going to add Lamy now. I'm waiting for Lamy to join us. So, good afternoon and welcome to Esther's Preparations Rooms Women's Network Instagram Live Series. Thank you so much. For joining us thank you thank you i'm waiting for lamy to join us it's still connecting esther's preparation room is a platform where today's professional christian women can access the tools and resources to deploy her marketplace our purpose is to build up and empower women to achieve the best in their personal and professional lives I'm still waiting for Lamy to join in. It says that she's still connecting. Let me cancel it and add her back on. Thank you so much for joining. Welcome, welcome, welcome. Welcome. How are you, Tolu? Fire me wool. FGLG Fashion, welcome. Titi Olubajo, welcome. Drill Dross, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us today. Ijioma 9452, welcome. Thank you so much for joining us. Um, hello, can you hear me? Hi, let me hear you, but I can't see you. Okay, I'm so sorry about that. Can you give me a moment? Let me try. It's some technical difficulties. <laughs> no problem, that's okay. I'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. At least I can hear you, so that's a good thing. All right, so while we wait for Lamy to join us back, how is everyone doing? How's your Saturday going? It's hot and sunny over here in New York. It's quiet. How's your day going? How has your day been? I'm excited about speaking with you guys and interacting with you. Interact with me, please. You can give me a thumbs up if you can hear me and see me. Thank you, Kemi. Wow, it's raining in UK. Wow. Well, it's beautiful over here. <laughs> I can't say I envy you. <laughs> But you know what? Rain is also great. Rain is also great. Showers of blessings. Ijama9452 is thinking of going food shopping. That's a great thing to do on a Saturday. Why not? Hello, Stephanie. Thank you so much for joining. How are you doing? Oh, Kemi is looking forward to, talk, to taking a walk later today. That's always a beautiful thing to do. I'm also thinking of taking a walk with my kids. I have twins and they keep me busy. It's hot and sunny where Tolu Fire Biwo is. All right, that's nice. That's great. I hope everybody's keeping safe. I hope you're maintaining social distancing and still finding ways to connect with your friends and your families and people that are important to you. It's a beautiful day. Let's make the most of this season. Do we have any essential workers online here? 
any essential workers would like to appreciate you and thank you for all that you're doing, even in this very season. God bless you. God continue to keep you. God protect you in Jesus' name. God preserve our families also. All right, let's talk. Engage me. Anyone has anything to say? Stephanie, it's great to see you. I haven't heard from you in a while. Thank you so much for joining. Okay, I think Lamy sent me a request now. Let's see. I'm waiting for Lamy right now to join. Yay! Hey. <laughs> Sorry about the technical difficulties. It's all right. all right. It's okay. The most important thing is that you're here and we can see you. Hello, Tola Omoba. It's great to see you. <laughs> Thank you so much. We can officially start, I guess. Okay. okay. Good afternoon and welcome to Esther's Preparation Room Women's Network Instagram Live Series. My name is Dolapo Olufumilayo, and I will be interviewing our very own Lamy Quadri. As I stated earlier, EPR Women's Network is a platform where today's professional Christian woman can access the tools and resources to deploy her gifts and talents in the marketplace. Our purpose is to build up and empower women to achieve the best in their personal and professional lives. The network is one of the four global programs powered by the Estes Preparation Room and currently exists in three markets. Today's guest is one of our very own Lamy Quadri ES. Lamy serves as managing attorney and is also the founder of the LA Law Firm and a nonprofit called FHF, which stands for Folks Helping Folk. Lamy is also a Christian artist. And since starting this year, is to three Today's conversation is around finding your voice and your purpose. Thank you so much for joining us, and we're looking forward to an inspiring. Lamy, so please give our audience a brief background about yourself, what you do, how you've been doing it, Let's jump right in. Okay. Um, so I think you just mentioned it. I've been an attorney for the past eight years. Um, and I've ascended to become a managing attorney at my current place of work. I also have my own firm, which is the LA Law Firm. And um, recently, I have started <laughs> um, a nonprofit, which is called Folks Helping Folks. And I started that because... I just felt like there was a need for it in the community that I am in. I'm in Chicago, Illinois. And also one of the things that many people know me as is a Christian artist. So I've gone to a number of countries and I've done my single, which is called Written by God. I have a new song coming out, which is called Grace um, Sufficient. And I'm excited to talk about that too. But that's a little bit about me. I'm also a mom a wife. I know my husband would be like, you should say wife first. <laughs> but, um, I'm a wife. I'm a, I'm a mother. And I think those, and that's just a bit about me. Uh, that's great. Thank you so much for joining us today. I'm really excited about interviewing you. And um, basically, one of the first things I would like to ask you is, were there any specific indications in your life? that led you to identifying your purpose? Like, how did you know you wanted to be an attorney? How did you know you wanted to be a lawyer? What led you to choosing that career pathway? Well, that's a long story, um, but short form. I come from uh, an African home. And if you know anything about African mothers and fathers, they want you to be a certain in a certain profession. So my mom wanted me to be a doctor. <laughs> So I went to undergrad and I got my biochemistry and chemistry degree. And you're like, oh my gosh, then how did I get into law? So, and I actually did my MCAT and I was going into, I was going to become a doctor, but it just wasn't something that I liked. I mean, I basically fainted at the side of blood when I was five years old. And my, I had cut myself and, you know, you put your hand under the, the, the running water and it feels like the blood is becoming more and more and more. And I saw that and I basically just passed out. <laughs> from a little cut um, and they still wanted me to be a doctor but <laughs> it 
it wasn't my calling. It wasn't my passion. Um, and somehow God just enabled me to speak to my parents. It was actually after, during graduation, I was uh, at a graduation party with my best friend and I, we had joined it. And I was just, I just told my mom and I was like, I don't want to be a doctor. And she's like, uh, we'll talk about that later. <laughs> and somehow it, we, it spiraled and I got to shadow my uncle who was an attorney. I didn't even know what I wanted to do. I just knew I didn't want to become a doctor. Um, and I fell in love with the law. And that's really, literally how I became a lawyer. But it's funny because my name, and I think we spoke about it a bit, a bit before, my first name actually means the goddess of law. Wow. So um, it's, I feel like I was always meant to be a lawyer, but I didn't even know until I actually ventured out of what the norm was. So Okay. Lamy, they're saying they can't see you properly. Can you please? Okay. 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 I don't know. Is that better? I, yeah, okay. that's great. Okay. That's great. Wow. So talk about the name your parents gave you actually leading you to discovering your purpose. So that just means shouldn't name our children have as have as this power in our names, this power in what we be and what we call ourselves. That's wonderful. Interesting. Yeah. Interesting journey. You actually study for your MCAT. <laughs> yes. I already even got into medical school. <laughs> wow. Yes. It's also important to have the right community of people that we can that we so at least you shadow and it was able to expose you to a different way of life and a different profession and for you to even be able to shadow him and see what life is in the day of a lawyer and be able to, like, you know what this is I think that's a I, I think it's great and I feel like there's nothing that is lost because now I'm an intellectual property lawyer and to be an intellectual property lawyer you actually even have to have a science degree. You have to have a science background to take the patent law exam and all that. So I wouldn't have been able to go into the field that I actually like to do if I didn't have that background. So I feel like even though sometimes you might not know where you're going to end up, everything that you're doing somehow got works it out for a purpose. Wow. And that's exactly what Romans 8.20 when he says all things work together for good. You know, Exactly. <laughs> according to his purpose and i'm a firm believer anyway that there's no knowledge that you ever gain that's ever lost one way or the other you'll find a way to use it be it in a conversation be it in research knowledge gained is never lost so that's a great thing so the next question i have for you what have you lami as a lawyer as an attorney what have you identified as a burden that you carry or a problem that you must solve and how has that fueled you in the pursuit of your purpose? Um, as a black woman attorney, it is rare for us to, to, it's rare for me to see somebody like myself. It's already rare for me to see a woman attorney, but it's rare for me to see a black woman attorney. So um, coming into the industry that I am in, especially because I am in the science field, which is a niche of the law, um, you hardly see people of my color. and. One of the things I have strived to do is that I try to bring people along. I'm actually part of the STEM um, group. So I, I go and speak to um, all these young kids and talk about, you know, what it is to be a woman of color and what it means to push for that role so that we can see more of us in, you know, corporate America. It's hard because as an attorney, you have to kind of understand what people are going through to be able to um, put yourself in the issue and be, be their best advocate. So the more you see people like me, the more, you know, I can represent somebody that is of my color or somebody that has been through my situation. So it gives us an even playing field. And that's one of the things that drives me always. Wow, that's, that's an important thing, especially right now with the yeah. racial, you know, in light of the recent death of George Floyd, representing matters representation 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 that's such an awesome point and thank you so much for that for carrying that burden spearheading that and speaking to our young and mentoring other young girls you know the importance of representation thank you so much now the journey of purpose right is a lifelong journey that peels layers of yourself 
into existence. And basically, I see, the way I see purpose, I see purpose like an onion. You know, when you see an onion, there's different layers. And each layer exposes or introduces you to a different aspect of yourself, a different dimension of yourself that you never knew existed. And in this day and age of technology and social media, one's identity is always questioned. How did you discover your voice in the midst of the noise? And how have you stayed true to your identity? So one of the things that you have to understand, I love when you said the purpose is like an onion, um, but I'm going to talk about the noise first. So yeah. when you say noise, noise is not like, oh, your friend is telling you what your purpose is. Noise is actually usually the people that are closest to you because everybody wants to define you. So if you don't define yourself, they're going to define you for you. Um, and that's almost what happened to me. They wanted to define who I was. And I'm not just talking about career wise. Um, most of the time, you don't see people that are attorneys that are also singing. It's, you know, it's, it doesn't correlate <laughs> to each other. And people were going to tell me, oh, you can't do that. You, you have to like stick to one part. You can't be a creative and do be in corporate America. It doesn't, it doesn't mend well together. Um, and, but you have to have your own voice. So I became a singing attorney, right? <laughs> so I know it sounds funny, but <laughs> it's, 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 that's basically what it I, is. <laughs> <I'm a attorney. laughs> I became a singing attorney and I know we spoke about names before, but names are very important. And I'm not just talking about the names that you have. You, one of the things that you have to figure out, and I think I just spoke about it before, is that you have to figure out what name God calls you. And that is going to really help you navigate through a lot of the things that you have to do. So if God calls you, you know, his beloved, if God calls you his joy, if God calls you his his all being you know what i'm trying to say so that speaks to what you need to do as your purpose right so as abraham was called abraham was the father of all nations um, of, of all people we're going to be the father of all nations jesus was the savior that's what their names actually mean um so that was their bigger i guess and in all purpose but they had small purposes along the way right um so abraham had a purpose to his family, had a purpose to his son, had a purpose to the people that were around him as he carried them along. And Abraham's purpose was not even fulfilled until he died. You know, we're in 2020 and we're talking about Abraham right now because he is the father of all nations. But he didn't see that until after, right? So knowing who you are in Christ helps you determine what you want to do as your purpose. And your purpose is just usually not just one thing. It's a number of different things that will lead you to your ultimate purpose. Wow, I love the fact that you said that knowing your purpose doesn't just be one, it will be multiple uh, things. Society has made us ill or seen as if our purpose is just one thing. You know, for example, you're thinking a time. Those are two different things. In your musical career as a Christian artist, you're fulfilling purpose. And also in your corporate life as an attorney you're fulfilling a different purpose can you expound on that okay so um i feel like every season of your life takes you to another season you have to finish one season before you get to the other season so i had to figure out who i was as an attorney before i even became a singing attorney right um and for me i didn't grow up like singing <laughs> <laughs> um, I mean, it was more like if I was carrying a tune at home, everyone was like, ah, you might want to stop that. <laughs> so, I can sing to sing. If they ask me to save my life by singing, I will die. <laughs> so I had to actually finish my career. Oh, or I had to start my career as an attorney before I even started singing, before I even discovered that I had a voice to sing. Um, so I feel like every every step of your season takes you to a new purpose right you have to kind of see it as it comes along um one of the things i always say is that jesus had to first find his disciples before he died he couldn't just die then it wouldn't make any sense right he had to go step by step and that's the thing about purpose it's always for a dip your purpose is always for that season that you're in and then you move on to your next purpose until you get to where god has intended for you to be Wow, that's such a great that's such a great point. So basically don't be fixated on just 
one aspect of your life as if that's your entire purpose that means that we should constantly grow we should constantly develop ourselves because we, we will always be different people in different seasons like you're a singing attorney your mother your wife and you're so many other things various seasons of your life that's such a great point now let's let's talk about the singing let's talk about your uh, career as a christian artist <laughs> So, how did you push past the voice of doubt and self-limiting beliefs to see yourself as a Christian artist and also be able to release your, your first single? Like, how did you push, I mean, you talk about identity, but how did you find the self-confidence to be able to do that? It's a daily walk <laughs> for self-confidence. I'm still working on that. But one of the things that I had that I had was a great support system, right? Um, like I said, I didn't grow up singing. I started singing about maybe five years ago. And I, um, I did my first song about three years or two and a half years ago. So I, I'm literally into this thing like nearly. <laughs> um, but one of the things I had was like my, not even my husband then because we were in the same choir, but <laughs> that's how we met, by the way. Oh. <laughs> um, but I had some friends that people at the time that would like encourage me to say, "Mommy, you can do it. You can, you can, you can do a song." I would listen to you, and I'm like, I'm barely even singing in choir. Talk about doing a song. Um, though they encouraged me, and I had to like literally let my own doubt not even people that were putting doubt on me that didn't really happen a lot of people were encouraging me but i had so much doubt in my head right what would my colleagues think you know i'm in a professional setting and then i come and like oh she's singing also like what would my clients think you know i had so much doubt but i literally had to quiet it all down with the word of god and i was listening to like sermons and different things about people about how they did theirs um and i actually found someone that was a lawyer attorney and she was something else also and i was like oh if she can do it i can do it you know um so literally i had to do it like quite my own doubts before i went forward so wow that's that's such a profound statement quiet your own doubt not even your support system was doubting you but you were doubting yourself so that also talks about the voices that you hear in your head and how you see yourself mentally how the, what you say to yourself, that's, that's important, you know? And the Bible says that I can do all things, all things through Christ that strengthens me, you know? I'm, I'm so glad and so grateful to God that you were able to push through those doubts and that it manifesting as a singing attorney. That's such a great... You great know, one of, one of the things I would add to Lockwood is that when I actually started, one of the doubts that I told you about was about my career, how my um, colleagues will look at me. And when I put up my first song, most of them are Jews and most of them, some of them are not even Christians. They were the, they were the ones that supported me the most. I have people that came to me and like, your song blessed me that didn't even know Christ. That I, like people, my boss came to me to talk to me about it. And so it just shows you that the things that you feel like are doubts are actually what's <laughs> that that I needed to do to reach those people. Um, so I just think that sometimes we're the, our own worst enemy. Wow. I mean, and just think of all the life by you just showing up, by you pushing and not letting anything to limit you, by saying, you know what, irrespective of the fears that I'm facing, I'm still going to do this. I'm still going to push through and I'm still going to manifest this. Thank you so much for doing so I have a question for you. What are your top five values and how do you incorporate them into your work as an attorney and as a Christian? Top five. My top five, I always say is I have a group. I feel like character is number one. If you don't have integrity, then you don't have anything. Um, you have to be in, uh, integrity and then you have to have compassion. I feel like if you don't have, so, I mean, you want me to just name it or talk about each one of them? <laughs> I'm, I'm soaking it all in. <laughs> okay, so integrity, I feel like, and I say this to a lot of my single ladies, look, the guy could be a Christian, 
but if he doesn't have integrity, then you want to move away quickly. Um, same thing in your profession, same thing in, because it speaks to you, like when you're working with someone, whether they're going to be um, somebody that you want to work with or somebody that you just, that you don't want to have interactions with for a long period of time, you know, as, as you build your network. So if you have integrity carries you, people know about it, especially in the legal field, actually. We talk a lot and we network a lot. So if you don't have integrity, people know. And your name carries that tone that says, I don't want to work with that person. That person is this, that person is that, that person is this. Judges know your name. Like it's hard to win cases because of it. It's hard to get clients because of it. So integrity is good. It's a must. And as a Christian artist, you're speaking and you're singing from your heart. So you have to be true to yourself, right? And that compassion, because we're all different, especially in this life that we're in right now, we're going through a new normal. Compassion is essential, whether you're of a different race, whether they're of a different religion, whether they're of a different, you know, they have different values. You have to have compassion for the person. It, your way is not always the highway. Um, sure. And then I, I'll say the next character, uh, quality that I that I feel like is important would be you know um, generosity um, I'm off the I'm off the mind that if you give you will get back not in the, always the way that you always think that you will get back but you give in your time you might get back in money you give up money you might get back in good health I, I always feel like what you throw out there always comes back good onto you um, so generosity and then um, I mean, I think those are my three. I don't, I, I'm like trying to think of other ones, but I think those are the three that I would like automatically go to, right? Okay. So out of five, you gave me three. <laughs> yes. <laughs> um, I mean, I've known you for a short period of time, but what I know of you, I can say loyalty. I can oh, say yeah. person. I, yeah. When I see you, when we talk, when we communicate, mm -hmm. I, I would say loyalty is one of your one of your um, values. You may not know it, you may not recognize it, but <laughs> yeah. yeah. I mean, I I think I'm a I'm a people person. So what happens is that I feel like everybody's a people person because I'm a people person, right? So I like. I like to interact with people. I like to share things with people. I like to help people, right? That's that's actually one of my purposes, just to help people, whatever whatever means is it is, whether it's through law, through music, through that's really what I'm about is about helping people. So I guess loyalty goes into that because you kind of have to be loyal to help people, right? Yeah. And not only that, I see you as I mean, I guess that also ties up into integrity, being a person of your word. You know, and um, I would say openness. openness is also uh, something that I see in you, that are recognizing you. You're very open to sharing knowledge, to giving knowledge. You're very open to learn, you know. So those are, I'll, I'll add those two to part of the values you have, loyalty and open-mindedness. Yes, it's funny that you mentioned that because that's exactly what my nonprofit is about. It's about being open. One of the things that I notice, especially um, in my group, and I my people of color is that we tend to be closed mouth and um i feel like we need to open up we need to talk about things and that's what my I, this shameless plug in but uh, that's what my nonprofit is about I'm gonna talk you know <laughs> you <laughs> share information that people know because I, I remember when i went to undergrad and my best friend actually had a scholarship and it wasn't an merit-based scholarship it was just a scholarship for being black you know, and it was not, it was a scholarship that paid for her schooling, her, that gave her a stipend and all the works, but a lot of people didn't know about it. And that scholarship was available. Now, um, that's what my nonprofit is about, is sharing information that are not, that you readily would not be able to access, but that will be there for you that you don't even know about. Because a lot of people don't know, okay, I need to go into this, I want to go to college, but you don't necessarily have to go to college because you don't have that information and it just push college on you. There are many ways of still working even in the law field without actually having a law degree, 
you know so basically sharing that information with people especially people of color so that they can get to that place because they've been um i don't want to say stick matted but basically they've been stunted in a lot of places because they don't have information mm -hmm. and even the bible says my people die because of lack of knowledge right so i feel like information is key and to share that information is key and so when you talk about openness that's exactly what i'm about and that's what I'm exactly what this nonprofit is about is about being open sharing information with everybody wow thank you so much flammy ladies please send questions in use the question box let me actually have a question here from Adeni K I B, and the question is: How do you find the time for a law career, music, and run a nonprofit? You're a woman. <laughs> <laughs> no, I'm not. She's a superwoman. <laughs> um, literally, it's all about time management, right? So. One of the things that I do is project management. So I have to know how to do, to keep my time. And it's funny because the more busy I am, I find out that the more um, organized <laughs> I am, the less time I have to procrastinate, right? So if I'm, gonna, if I'm gonna do something by four to five, I have to do that by four to five because if I don't do it, then I don't have the time to do it again. So I make sure that I'm, less procrastination because i think that's the debt for most people they can do a, a lot of people can do a lot of stuff right it's just that we don't use our time wisely so i make sure i have a schedule and i keep to that schedule as much as possible that's what i do wow that's that that's a great thing you you put out there time management and i think in addition to that it will also be mastery yourself not procrastinating you know so being diligent in what you're doing that's great. Please, um, if you have any questions for Lamy, please use the question box. Please send your questions in. So let's talk a little bit more about your um, nonprofit foundation. I know you mentioned it about helping people, folks helping people. Why did you name it? For How did you come up with the name? Because a lot of people know me and my phrase is always like, oh, you folks. <laughs> so... That's what I say all the time, folks. Oh, y'all folks. <laughs> That's your so, program. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a folks kind of person. I don't even say people. I just say folks, right? And um, so when I wanted to name it, um, I mean, I definitely prayed about it. And God was like, you you already have the name. So I was like, oh, what does he mean? And like, you know, folks helping folks. And I'm like, okay, that's great. <laughs> and then I went online to actually – that's not true. I, I was like, when he told me folks helping folks, I was like, ah, that's kind of a little ghetto. So <laughs> let me say people helping people. And then when I tried to, you know, trademark the name, people helping people had been taken. <laughs> but folks helping folks had not been taken. I was like, okay, God, I, I hear you. <laughs> so, but you know, the name is also very relatable. Like when I hear folks helping folks, I, I want to know if you guys are helping <laughs> Oh, okay, because I was like, I don't know. It sounds a little, you know, who I am. But, <laughs> but yeah. So how is your nonprofit organization? How can people connect with you? You know, what do they need to do if they want to reach you? I mean, I'm in the begin beginning stages, so they can reach me by this handle, Lamy Quadri, because I'm still working a lot of logistics. And because of COVID, we were actually supposed to have a program this June. Um, which was going to be centered around real estate. But um, you can literally reach me on this handle, Lamy Quadri, and how you want to join or what information you want to pass along. We're going to be having a website up pretty soon. So we'll share that with everyone. Um, and as well, I'm going to be, thank you, EPR, uh, Essence Preparation Room. So I'm going to be sharing information with Essence Preparation Room too, if, um, so that you can get that information from Essence Preparation Room as well. Um, so yeah. You can, they can do that. That's great. Elim CPA says, laugh out loud. I actually know people who are involved with people helping. People. <laughs> <laughs> so that's a good one. Ijeoma says, can you expand more on your time management? What time do you wake up? Do you have to make breakfast for your family? What time do you exercise every day? What time do you go to bed? <laughs> He's going in. <laughs> oh my gosh. Okay. I think I even told you. I wake up at five o'clock in the morning. I'm not 
a de I, I don't sleep a lot and my body is used to that I, I don't so I mean if you can't sleep eight hours that's great I, I go to bed usually like around 11 or 12 depending and I wake up at five um I sleep in if I'm sleeping in it's till six o'clock okay now I do make breakfast for my kid um even if I don't want to he starts to cry he's hungry <laughs> And I have another, my husband also, the great thing about my husband is that he loves to cook. So sometimes I make breakfast for him if, if he's feeling like he wants a wife to really do that. Uh, but he just makes his own stuff by himself and sometimes makes me breakfast. Uh, and then I go around, do my work. Usually I already have planned my week out. I plan my week out on Sundays. I plan my week out, my schedule. You would see my, okay, I'm using, my calendar is call accorded. So like I have, so many calls, but I know exactly. So even if I can't read, I know that this caller means I need to do this. That this caller means I need to do this. In fact, when I, to the point of prepping food, because um, when to bring out my, my meat from the freezer, like I literally have time for everything. <laughs> it's because I know this is going to take I'm this adjusting. much this, <laughs> so, to defrost. So I feel like it's important. And I, I learned this when I was in um, law school, actually. Because I was in law school and they tell you don't have don't have a job in law school because it's already stressful. And I had a friend that had four jobs. In law school? In law school. And she was my closest friend. And I'm like, okay, she has four jobs. What am I doing? So I got four jobs <laughs> because I didn't want to be a slacker. But um, and I had the, my job was like in, in sometimes different cities. So I had a job that was in a three hour in a uh, city that was three hours away, so I had to time manage, so I could make sure that I passed my exams and still did well at my job. So I think that taught me what to do for now. That's great. KIB Foundation says structure and organization a secret to success. Well, you are succeeding at it, Lamy. <laughs> I'm, I'm trying. Well. It's a walk in progress. <laughs> All right, so the last question I have for you, unless somebody else asks another question. Looking at yourself now, what advice do you have for your 13-year-old self, your 18-year-old self, and your 20 So you're going <laughs> to look at life right now, picturing it. What would you tell your Oh, my gosh, my 13-year-old self. I think I just told you a story. My 13-year-old self was a rebuctious self. Um, I'm like, slow down. <laughs> <laughs> so, slow down life is gonna happen you don't have to move too fast um and my 18 year old self i would say learn to um learn how to read <laughs> so i coasted through life a lot without reading and i had to learn how to read later on so um if i knew how to read when I say learn how to read, I'm not saying like, obviously we can all read, hopefully. Um, but learn how to read and retain information and read in the right way. Mm. Um, so I would tell that to my 18 year old self. Um, and then my 20 year old self, um, take it easy. Um, you don't always have to have a plan for everything. I know I've just been talking about structure, structure, but I try to plan my life out. And then God was like, stop. That's not how it's going to happen. I, I told myself I was going to get married at this age. I was going to have this at this age. And my 20-year-old self, God was telling me, look, you don't plan your life. I plan your life. You know, so that's what I would tell my 20-year-old self. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. Take it easy. How to read. And you don't have to have everything all planned out. Those are great. Those are great. Things. So you did mention about your grace sufficient. I want to hear about it. Who knows? Maybe you're going to give us. <laughs> you're going to say <laughs> For us. <laughs> uh, great sufficient. Um, what inspired? I was going through a, a rocky time in my life, and you know, I was like, oh, "Lord, take this from me," and, you know. And I came across the Bible verse that basically said, "You know, you know." He had asked three times for God to take him, uh, take this burden away from him, and he, God had said, "Basically, my grace is sufficient for you." And when I came across that verse, I was like. That's not the verse I want. <laughs> That's not what I'm trying to hear. Uh, I, so I want you to say something like, don't worry, I'll fight your battles for you and everything will be great. <laughs> so um, 
and I kept getting that verse. I kept getting the verse, and I was like, you know what? And then I wrote about it, and it, it made sense. Mm -hmm. So I wrote out my pain, and it made sense why God had given me that verse. So that's why that song came into being. So. Wow. Well, mm -hmm. can you perform for us? Uh, you know what? Do you know what? Because I know you've been asking me about this, and I was like, I don't have my piano or anything. Um, so I'm gonna do a little. I'll do a verse. I'll do it a cappella, obviously, because I'm in my room. Okay. Um, Stay tuned, guys. Lamy's about to <laughs> debut. Okay. Great dance right now. We're listening. We're all <laughs> on my knees, ready to pray. Wondering if it's gonna make a change. Cause I'm all prayed out. When will real change come? Yeah, yeah. Pastor says, keep the fight. But will faith really make a way? And the all just words. Lord, I need your help. Right now, then I hear time feels slow. But it's okay. Don't give up your fight. For my grace is more than enough. So. Are you serious? That's, <laughs> That's where we're going to stop. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Wow. Yeah. That's so beautiful. You have such a beautiful voice. For oh, thank you. So, I can't even believe you started singing five years ago. But wow. God's grace is sufficient for us all. Even right now, even in the season, God's grace is sufficient. Thank you so much for oh no thank you for having me it was a pleasure so everyone thank you so much for joining EPR Women's Network today please follow us all on our social media handles on YouTube Estes Preparation Room Telegram Estes Preparation Room Instagram Estes Preparation Room Lani thank you so much for a wonderful Saturday your story is Inspiring. Your story is encouraging. Your story has increased my faith in God. And I'm just excited and I'm blessed to know you. Please, everyone, follow Lamy. I'm going to go through the comments before we end this session just to hear some feedback and hear and see what people are saying. I'm just going to go through the comments. Allah Shadi says so accomplished. Talking about you. Um, oh, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> Madam Pepe uh, says all of us. I think she was, refer I believe she was referring to when you said you fainted at the sight of blood. So she said, <laughs> <"All of us." laughs> LMC CPA says triggered. <laughs> um, what else? I'm still looking through the comments. C. Glossy says, Go, Lamy. Allah Shari says, Yes, names have power. Philip Immobile says, Hey, Lams. Drill Drust says, <laughs> no, <laughs> says, No knowledge is lost. Allah Shari worked out when we were discussing about you, you know, studying for the MCAT, you know, and ended, ended up, you know, going to law school. Adeni K I B says agree the lack of knowledge comes up always. Ijama nine four five two says God works things together for our good. Thank God. Um, okay, Adeni K I B says I agree the lack of we do see the entire picture, and I believe she was talking about this when I used the analogy of the onion being peeled in different layers, and she said we peel our purpose in season. Uh, Adi Kemi 80 says, love it, sing an attorney. <laughs> uh, what else? Still looking through. Oh, Adi Kemi says, you sing beautifully. Love the point, Lamy, about refusing oh. to let people box you in. Oh, thank you. Adi Kemi 80 says, that self-critique, talking about the self-doubt voices that you hear in your hair. Alash Adi says, when you see what's possible with others, it gives you the courage to do for yourself. Wale Babs, 18 says, you sitting at my wedding. Don't be playing. <laughs> oh, Wale, I got you. I got you. <laughs> Congratulations again. He's like such an amazing dude. But, yeah. 
That's perfect. And um, when we were talking about values, Ola Shadi talks about what's in their heart. What are they like behind closed doors? Uh, okay, Adenike says three powerful ones referring to your uh, referring to your values. She says the lack will give us some more. Which I, I did. I gave you uh, loyalty and open mindedness. <laughs> okay, I think we are. I'm looking for to see if we have more stuff. Okay, I see beautiful, very nice. Okay, EJMA9452 says very nice. Adekemi 80 says angelic voice. Alashade says beautiful. Jade Falawiyo gives a love emoji. Drill drop the love emoji. Adenike IB says great job, Dolakwa. Thank you. EJMA9452 says thanks, Dolakwa. Thank you. Adekemi 80 says awesome job, folks. Thank you. C Glossy says thank you. Thanks for your encouraging and inspiring story, Lami. Aji Bamidele says, thanks to Lapo and Lami. Steve Glossy says, thanks for hosting the Lapo. Thank you. Drill Dress says, great job. Thank you. Oh, there's a question. Okay, the, I think that's question here. It says, with the many hats that you are wearing, your heart still has room to help folks. God bless you and your nonprofit organization. Folks help. Oh, thank you. God. Thank that God. is awesome. Nonye RX. Nonye RX. Oh. Thank you so much. So to everyone that has joined us today, thank you so much for sharing your Saturday with us at this point. Thank you. This live video. <laughs> we should do a great weekend and see you next week, Saturday. Next week, Saturday at 12 o'clock. We're going to have another live video. Stay tuned. You don't want to miss it. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much, Lamy, for indulging answering all my questions and thank you for being a blessing god, oh, bless. god. Okay. thank you take care bye, bye. bye.